Hello, Peter here. Today we're going to finish the material and the uh, material function by adding uh, the last element that we need and that is rotation. These episodes tend to be a bit long uh, because I'm both drawing all these graphs and trying to explain exactly what is happening. Um, I, I really like the idea of, of making this live instead of just copying stuff in and, 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 and telling about it. So I will try to combine that still but I'm going to use uh, a bit more often uh, jump cuts because it, it's just dragging on too much. But, but I really think it's nice to explain exactly what happens. Especially when, you, uh, when we are looking at what's still to come. The complexity of this is fairly uh, small compared to the rest of the SDL tutorial. So let's, let's get started. Open the blob shadow material because I'm going to start on the other end today. We need to add uh, two scalar parameters. And the first one we will call rotation. You can leave the values at zero. Then we can duplicate that one and call this one object rotation. Now they both do the same thing, it's just that one parameter is for a fixed rotation of the shadow. So you have an uh, elliptic shadow and uh, you want to have that always oriented in a certain way because for instance you have a, a player with a gun in his hand or, or whatever so that is sort of a fixed rotation for the shadow the object rotation is the rotation that's going to be added to that one because of the movement of the player or the the object that is casting the shadow so you can do it of course in one but it's easier to have to to have them separated so now we have these parameters already, we can save the material. And we go to our ellipsoid mask function, open it, and there we need to now be an, at the complete other end of it. This is where the position of the shadow comes in, and we need to do some changes there. Okay, we need a bit of space here, so let's move all this out of view. And we need two new inputs. And those are, of course, the ones that were parameters in the material. So that is rotation. It is a scalar. And I think we were at 9 as a sort priority. And then we can duplicate this one, put it under here, and name that one Object Rotation. And give it 10. Now obviously those two rotations, one being a fixed rotation of our shadow, the other one being caused by the movement and the rotation of the component, we need to add. Okay, so in the material um, functions, the, the, the material expressions, the sine and cosine functions uh, don't use angles, but they use the period. So what we're going to do is divide this And by 360 degrees because we are going to enter our rotations in degrees. So constant B should now be 360. So now I'm going to quickly wire up some stuff uh, to save a bit of time and then uh, I will explain what happens there. Okay, that is done. So what I want to have is from the rotation to create two new uh, vectors for the axes. 
uh, this one creates the vector for the x-axis and we do that by taking the cosine of the angle which will give us the x-coordinate and the sine will give us the y-coordinate then we create a vector 3 out of that the z is not interested for us we're not interested in that one at all because we're only interested in rotations in the xy plane so this here is a vector for our x-axis the same we do for the y and we just simply add 90 degrees or a quarter period and then do the cosine and the sine to get the x and the y coordinates now why do I want that because what I need to do is to do a inverse transform uh, with it so we create inverse transform matrix and now we can hook up the new basis for X the new basis for Y and this one can just be a constant for the Z and that is going to be constant 3 vector I can put that here and we need to set the B which is the Z to 1 so that axis is not changed it is still the same now this one the vector to transform that really is the one that we got in from the world position behind translucency uh, subtracted with the object position so first of all we need to break all these links and put that one here and hook this one up there and now we have to reattach all the masks again with the output of this transform but we can get it slightly closer to the rest like that yes. now let's connect our masks again and now we have corrected the uh, position for our rotation so this should be all okay I will show this one more time so we have the parameters so that you can understand this so just take the the angles add them together create new x and y axes for our inverse, inverse transform matrix and then transform this position with the new axis and then just do all the stuff as it was let's save this and now in our material we can hook up our parameters we now have these two new inputs we can put rotation in rotation and object rotation in object rotation now this is beginning to be a bit ugly let's yeah so save this one and now we're going to play with it and see what happens well everything still looks okay so that's good now for for this to become visible we need a an elliptic form for our shadow so let's say that our radius for the X is going to be 30 
save that and now we see that we have an electrical shadow there. So let's, now let's put a rotation on that. The rotation for that one, let's put the value to 45 degrees. And save it. You see now that actually the the shadow now has rotated with 45 degrees. Okay, that is our rotation done. Keep in mind that the the cube that creates the shadow has not rotated one bit. Let me show you by selecting it. You see it has still the same orientation. It is just the opacity mass that we generate in the function that has uh, rotated. Yeah, with this we are now finished uh, with the uh, blob shadow material and the material function. And in the coming episodes we are going to uh, implement the SDL blob shadow component. That will use them and uh, create a real component out of it that we can add to other components and uh, actors to give them cool blob shadows. So go ahead and experiment with what we have now. And uh, I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Hello, Peter here again. Just wanted to say thanks for watching this video. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Below there are links to other episodes in the series. And don't forget to subscribe so you are the first to know when the next episode is up. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.